Welcome, welcome, welcome to One Brush Stroke at a Time. We are excited. We are excited in the ministry. Things are popping all around us. God is opening amazing doors. And I don't just mean doors of opportunity. He's opening doors of revelation, doors of relationship, restoration, doors of hope, and doors of freedom. We're just seeing things move in the spirit realm that we have never seen before. And we are excited about God's Word because everything, everything that we do in this world, everything that comes to us, comes through the Word. There's nothing that we receive that's not from the Word. There's nothing that we can do apart from the Word. There's no power that we can possess but the Word. I'm excited to bring you today a message called, For Your Eyes Only. For His Eyes. We're talking about the Lord's Eyes. That what we do are for His Eyes Only. We don't do things for man's sake. We don't do things to get man's applause or man's acclaim. We don't do things for fame and fortune. We do things for the Lord and for His eyes. Many things we do in secret that He sees only. In fact, in Matthew, He tells us to go into our prayer closet. And the things that we do in secret, He will reward openly. He says when we give, to give in secret, and again, what we give in secret, He will reward openly. And so there is a whole life that we live for Him that are for His eyes. And as I was thinking about that, I got to thinking and wondering about my own eyes and what people see through me, through my eyes. And so I went on a little hunt today, looking up scriptures about the eyes and about the power, about what the Bible says through our eyes. And this is a great, great little word just to remind us that we need to be careful with these eyes. Let me give you a scripture. It's Luke eleven thirty four. It's a familiar scripture. Let me read it. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. So right away, Jesus is telling us that if our eyes are good, then light is in our body. If our eyes are bad, then there's darkness. So really, it would send us on to this hunt to want to know what a good eye or a bad eye is. I know as I'm getting older, my eyes are getting a little bad, that I don't see as well as I did when I was 20. Sometimes nighttime bothers me. Rain showers bother me. Um, I need readers sometimes when I'm at the computer for a long time. I also know that when I used to play softball, that if I let a pitch go by that was outside the strike zone, they would say, good eye, good eye. And so uh, having that perception was a good thing. So I looked in the scriptures to find out and discover just what God was telling us about the scripture, about the eye being good and being the light of the body, that it lets light in. It gives us the light that shines forth from us. Conversely, a bad eye brings darkness. So we are very careful. We should be very careful what we see and where we cast our gaze. We watch things on TV we might not ought to watch. We go to movies we might not ought to see. We look at things that we really should turn away from, but they grab our visual attentions, and we don't want to release the gaze from that sight. But God is telling us something very different in the scriptures, because our eyes are a filter. That's what, the, that's what that scripture says. Our eyes are a filter. If we have good eyes or good things in our eyes, then light goes through. If we filter bad things, then darkness goes through. So our eyes are acting as a filter to our souls. A filter to our souls. Now sometimes, I know from uh, filters in your car filters, your air filters, uh, air conditioner filters, heating filters, dryer filters, you have to clean those filters off every once in a while. Otherwise, they get hot and overheat and they can start fires. We do not want to start a fire inside of us. It's not God's holy fire. Amen? So we need to clean our filter, which is our eyes. 
We say that the eyes are the window of the soul. In other words, <clears throat> we can look in somebody and look in their eyes, and it sort of gives us a window to their soul. Someone can look in my eyes and see my soul through my eyes. Sometimes I don't think I want people to see my soul, amen? Because it's not as full of light as I would like it to be. But nonetheless, this is how God shows us what the eyes are. Now, by definition in the scriptures, the word eye is very different than how we perceive it to be. The word eye in the Greek means flowing as a fountain. In other words, it's flowing as a fountain. Now, it can be both ways. What flows into me can be a fountain, and what flows out of me is a fountain. But the indication in this word is flowing out, a fountain that flows out. In other words, a good eye, a, a good eye brings light. A bad eye brings darkness. And so I, I ask, what's flowing out of me? What fountain is coming forth from my eyes? Or even more significant, what fountain is flowing into my soul? It's not so much a matter of what goes through my eyes, but what is reflected through them. So let me talk to you a little bit, show you a couple of verses about the eyes. There were a lot more verses about the eyes than I ever really thought about because we really don't sit down and go through verse, 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 verse about a word. But that's what teachers do when we come to teach. We study the word, at least I do, in its entirety. If I look up the word I and there are 238 verses on I, I will look through each one to get a good understanding of the scripture. I don't have to stop at five or six. I need to see the whole picture of the word. And so I did that, and I just want to show you some of the verses about the word I. Job 17, 7 says, My eye has also grown dim because of sorrow. I, I've seen sad eyes. I've had sad eyes. And Job says that they, our eyes can grow dim because of sorrow. They lose that sparkle. They lose that, that light in them, that speck of, of happiness or, or joy and rejoicing because of sorrow. Psalm 89 verse 9 says, My eye wastes away because of affliction. Again, the eyes can become dim because of an affliction in our lives, a trial, a trouble, a tragedy, a death, a pain, a hurt, and our eyes can grow dim. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14 says, False teachers, hypocrites, and false teachers have eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Eyes full of adultery that can't cease from sin. Enticing, listen, unstable souls. In other words, there are people out there who have sin in their eyes. The Bible says if you have lust for somebody, you've already committed adultery. Lust is of the eyes. You lust after them. You see them with your eyes. And it says that there are people in this world who have lust in their eyes that cannot cease from sin that want to entice unstable souls. Remember, the eye is the window of the soul. And that's how this verse links to that, is that unstable souls or souls that are sometimes full of light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, that's unstable. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, including our souls. And when our souls are unstable because of what our eyes are seeing, then someone else can entice us to sin. They can entice us to lust with our eyes. And so we'd be really careful how we filter those types of people. 2 John chapter 2, verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. In other words, the lust of the eyes is not from God. There is not anything that I lust for that is a God-given desire. Those are worldly, evil desires. That's what goes through my eyes sometimes. That's what. That's why Luke 11 says we need to filter out those types of things that go in and come out of our eyes. Proverbs 10.10. 10. 
He who winks with the eye causes trouble, but a prating fool will fall. One who winks with his eye. Now, I really thought about that a little bit. And I, we see like a wink like I gotcha, or a wink like a flirt, or a wink like it's a done deal, or a wink like, hey, this is not a good thing. And the, the Bible says those who wink cause trouble. And, and when you think about it, a wink is innocent until what the wink is about, right, changes the wink. But I also thought about it this way, that when I wink, I close the eye. I, I close the eye. Even for a moment, I close the eye. And God says that when we close our eyes, I'm going to show you a verse later, that when we close our eyes, that can bring us to a place where we don't become enlightened on the inside. It's a great verse later on. I'll show you. Proverbs 28, 27. He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. When you turn away from that which is good, when you hide your eyes from the poor and the plight of the needy, when you turn your eyes away from someone who needs your help, when you turn your eyes away from the things of God, when you turn your eyes and hide your eyes, you will have many curses. I'm just trying to give you a sense of what the Bible is talking about and how important and powerful the eyes are that when we wink or close them or keep them open, bring consequences. Our eyes bring consequences into our lives that we may not foresee, we may not even be aware of, we may not even know what consequence lies with our eyes. Oh God, for your eyes only. Now, perhaps that's why the psalmist asks God, and this is a great psalm. This is Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 18, it says this. Open my eyes, that I may behold wonderful things in your law. Again, hiding your eyes, winking, closing your eyes. The psalmist is now saying, Lord, Open my eyes. Keep my eyes open to the wonderful things in your law. Of course, the law is the whole counsel of God in the Bible. Old Testament, New Testament. That's God's law. And the psalmist is crying out, and it's a great prayer. God, open my eyes to the good things in your law. Because if I behold the wondrous things... If the light, if the eye is the lamp of the soul, and if I am letting the light of his word into me, then my soul becomes nothing but beautiful and pure, holy light coming in as a fountain and flowing forth as a fountain. Open my eyes, God, to the wondrousness of your word, to the beautiful works of your law, <clears throat> that I may put that in, that it might pour forth out. Amen. And maybe that's why Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. He said, I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. And that word enlightened is a great word. I looked it up. It means to give light, to shine, to brighten up. And I like this, to light every man. That's what it said in, in, in the Greek, to give light. Lord, enlighten my eyes. Open them. Enlighten my eyes. Enlighten my eyes, the eyes of my heart, my eyes, that I might brighten up, that I might shine, that I might give light, that I might light every man that I see. I want my eyes to reflect him, not to reflect what might be darkness inside of me because I'm trying to filter out all the darkness. But I'm afraid in this world... We see more than we can ever imagine. We see murders on TV. We see crimes and, and all sorts of, of heinous things on TV. We go to movies and our eyes see even more things. We see billboards that are awful. We see people doing things in public that we would never dream of seeing anymore. There are shows on TV where people are, are, are fully naked and, and we turn to that. Uh, we have to have enlightened eyes. We need to filter out the junk and the gunk. We need, to f we need to filter out the filth of this world. And I'm afraid that most of us are seeing way too many things that, are that is bringing darkness 
to our souls. The Lord wants what is in our hearts and souls to shine through our eyes to illuminate this dark world. That's a beautiful prayer from Paul. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be opened, would be brightened up, would be able to bring light to other people in other places. Have you ever stopped to think just how important eyes are? When we think about them physically, you know, we want to protect our eyes, we wear eye gear, we wear goggles when we uh, uh, ski, uh, we wear uh, sunglasses to protect our, our eyes from the light, um, we, we put glass, protective glasses on children in science classes, we wear our goggles or, or protective glasses when we're working in a wood shop. We're always careful to take care of our physical eyes. If they get dry, we put drops in them. If they grow weary, we put glasses on them. We go to eye doctors and we get our eyes checked and we get our eyes tested. All in the natural, all in the physical, in the flesh part. But I wonder if you take that good a care of your eyes in the spirit realm. I know it's something that God has brought my attention to, that I need to take better care of my eyes in the spirit realm than I do in the physical realm. Oh, you know, I remember, this is a, a PS, and by the way, years ago, I had an astigmatism in one eye and a little bit of needing of correctness in the other eye. So I wore glasses, and I didn't want to wear glasses. And every day I put my glasses on, I put them on every day, and I said, I'm healed in Jesus' name. And when I put them on the next day, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I know my eyes are healed. I put them on every day. I'm healed in Jesus' name. It took two years. And one day I woke up and I put on my glasses to say I'm healed in Jesus. And I stopped cold. And I thought, oh my golly, something has happened to my eyes. These glasses are almost hurting my eyes. Until I realized when I took them off that my eyes had been healed. I took two years of special care of my physical eyes. I prayed over my physical eyes every single day. But I neglected my spirit eyes. Not anymore. Because God wants me and wants you to not worry so much about your physical eyes but to let those spiritual eyes be enlightened, to be opened, and be a filter. Psalm 19, verse 8 says that his commandments are, let me read it. It says, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. God's word is what opens up and lightens up my eyes. It's not something on TV. It's not something I can put in my eyes. God's word is the agent of cleansing for these eyes. And what that word does is acts as a filter. Because if I have his word enlightening me on the inside, then when something that is of darkness comes at my eyes, the light reacts to that and it rejects the dark thing. So his word is the, the agent, it's the vessel through which we can have pure, lighted, bright eyes. The lamp of the body, the lamp, you can turn a lamp on and turn a lamp off. The lamp is the, of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. So how do I fill this body with light? When my eye is good, my body is full of light. How do I walk in light? By putting good things in my eyes. And what's the best thing we can put? His word. Proverbs 22 verse 9 says this, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. An eye that sees need, an eye that sees a, somebody who needs something that I have, that eye, that beautiful, pure, enlightened eye, will be cast upon, my gaze will find someone in need. A generous eye will be blessed. Not just an eye that sees it, but an eye that gives it. What am I giving? Now think about this. A generous eye. What do I have in my eyes? Light. Light, light, light. And when I can look at somebody and generously bring light through my eyes into their lives, there is no, really nothing much greater than having light cast into a dark place. 
And the scripture tells us that the eye is the lamp. It, we can either turn it on or turn it off. And if we have light, we can be generous with that light. I love that picture of being generous with light. You know, when you, when you have a, a dark room and a little flashlight and you're trying to see things through the flashlight, that's beautiful because it illuminates. But to be generous with a light is to have a dark room with a huge floodlight lighting up the entire room. Almost too much. That's generous light. And God wants our eyes to be full of generous light. Now Proverbs chapter 20 verse 12 tells us that these eyes are a gift. They're a gift. Listen to what this says. The hearing ear and the seeing eye... The Lord has made them both. Now, if the Lord took pain in his word to tell us that he created these eyes, then you have to ask yourself, what did he create them for? What is the purpose of his creating our eyes? Yes, to see in the physical realm, but that's not what God's talking about. The listening ear or the seeing eye. The Lord has made them both. God has, cre has created our eyes to see the light, to see darkness in need of the light. God has made these eyes to reflect his light. It's not enough for us to see the world through his eyes. The world needs to see him through ours. Let me say that again. It is not enough for us to see this world through his eyes. The world needs to see him through ours. If my eye is full of light, then my body is full of light. So that when I gaze upon anyone, when I look to anyone, if anyone looks into my eyes, the only thing they see is his perfect, brilliant, pure light. For your eyes only, Lord, I want my eyes to be his eyes. I want his eyes to be seen through my eyes. I want to see, I want his light to be seen through me in the darkness. Oh, this is a great little word. You know, we don't think about it that often. We don't think about what God says to us in his word about a scripture here or a scripture there until we put it all together. And when God laid this out for me today, I sort of shook my head wondering, I wonder how much light people have seen in me. Through these years serving him, I wonder if I've ever casted a dark gaze upon anyone. And I, it, with a repentant heart, I said, God, no more. I don't want anything dark to be let in this filter. This, these filtered eyes, I don't want to see anything dark or anything off color. I want just light to come into my eyes to be filtered through. I'm tired of seeing those things on TV. Aren't you just growing weary of all the filth that we see in this world? Yet we as Christians just want to tolerate it. I'm telling you, close your eyes to that darkness. Open them to the light and let that filter down into your soul. I remembered a poem by Ralph Waldo Emerson that I had read a long, long time ago. My grandmother, who has gone on to be with the Lord, my grandmother taught me how to appreciate finer things like opera and symphony, uh, uh, concerts and symphonies and books and Shakespeare and poetry. She was a tremendous influence in my life. And in her later waning years, she would call me and ask me to play some classical piece. Her favorite was Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy. And I'd play that for her over the phone. Sometimes she'd ask me to read poetry or read a poem. And this was the one of them that she liked. And in it, he says this, and I can threaten like a loaded and level gun, or it can insult like hissing and kicking, or in its altered mood, by means of kindness, it can make a heart dance for joy. The eyes are like a loaded and leveled gun, or the eyes can make a heart dance for joy. I think it's time the church has eyes that make a heart dance for joy. Amen. If you have a need, a prayer request, give us a call at the ministry. Write us. Get on the website. We will answer you. We will pray for you. We will lift your name to the throne. And we will shine light into your life, we pray. 
God loves you. He's painting a picture of your life with his one brushstroke at a time. God bless you. Introducing the new Zulon Press book, In Moments Like These, Volume 2, by Jenny Fister. Moments Like These, Volume 2, is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today.